This picture behind me, which I'm using for a backdrop, shows a rather fanciful recreation of Patrick Pierce pinning up the proclamation of the Irish Republic. However, he needn't have bothered, as according to Simon Webb, a Northern Ireland existed in 1914, and the Easter Rising occurred in 1916, so therefore there wasn't really much point in the Anglo-Irish War and everything was a foregone conclusion. Um, let's have a look at the House of Commons Library on these issues, because this is actually getting quite hilarious at this point. This is the House of Commons Library. I think it's going to be pretty hard to argue with this one. The Northern Ireland border came into existence on the 3rd of May 1921, existed as part of the Government of Ireland Act 1920. That established, this established the Parliament of Northern Ireland 1921 to 1972, whose territorial extent was defined by reference to the six counties of Ulster. This is quite interesting, you would think. Now, let's have a look at some other things. Simon has claimed in the Daily Mail today that the Northern first bomb in Northern Ireland was in Lisbon. There'll be a link to that Daily Mail article where you can check that he's going on about the first bomb in Northern Ireland. Not Ireland, Northern Ireland. But Simon then goes on about how the new underground lines could equally be called the Hamas or IRA lines. Oh dear, Simon. Um... There's a few problems with that, and you'll notice, Simon, I'm using sources from the Jewish Chronicle, the Jewish Post, Jerusalem Post, and another Jewish paper for this. They're all sources from outside an Irish background. Here's the Jerusalem Post. Dublin's Jewish Lord Mayor recalls meeting Zionist leaders. Ben Briscoe re reminisces about meeting his father's old comrade, Menachem Beaker, and his Jewish roots. Simon, you've expressed quite a bit of admiration for the Ergen. The, uh, here we go. Irish politician Ben Briscoe, age 88, quite old there, recalls visiting Israel in 1974, shortly after the Yom Kippur War, and having quite the memorable meeting with Yitzhak Rabin. And both his Jewish background and his father's role in the Ergen as a former IRA arms smuggler. Notice that? Ben Briscoe's father's role in the Ergen as a former IRA arms smuggler who was involved in Israel's founding. For those who aren't familiar with Ben Briscoe's father, he's Robert Briscoe, who was also Dublin's Lord Mayor and who was instrumental as a gunrunner during the Irish War of Independence. The Irish forces would have just about collapsed if he hadn't been smuggling weapons in due to contacts he had on the mainland in Europe. His father thought Robert Israeli founders begin and Ziv Jabotsky how to fight the British using tactics he had learned from the Irish struggle. Later, he went on to become a politician, was elected Dublin's first Jewish Lord Mayor in 1956. And here's a much longer article from the Jewish Chronicle, The Jew at the Centre of Irish Nationalism. 100 years ago, a small group of Irish men and women, well done for actually acknowledging the women who normally don't get acknowledged in this stuff, staged a military uprising from Dublin's GPO in a futile attempt to throw off the British yoke and achieve Irish independence. The leadership of the uprising were foolishly executed after courts martials which caused a disaster, which turned support to them. They became martyrs in a religious country which believed in martyrdom, to some extent true. I could argue how true it is, but as a part summary, it's fine. But their manners of their deaths fueled a national movement which confronted the British military to secure an Irish free state in the 1920s. Its participants were witness to civil war and to a partition of the island which apparently in the Simon Webb timeline occurred before the Easter Rising, so no one should have bothered whether Jewish or Irish or any other, other religion or faith involved in this struggle because time travel had incurred and time had been altered. The Easter Rising in 1916 made a tremendous impression on a second-generation Irish Jew, Robert Briscoe, the subject of an excellent new biography by Kevin McCarthy. Robert Briscoe, who is hardly known on this side of the Irish Sea, was the book's subtitle, states the Sinn Féin revolutionary, 
xenophile nationalist and a revisionist Zionist. This rising tide of Irish national awareness went hand in hand with the deaths of thousands of, de of Irishmen fighting for battle at Britain at the Battle of the Somme in 1916. Britain, who was in New York running a Christmas light factory, became involved in the broad Irish American Republican movement. In August 1917, he returned to Ireland, established a clothing business as a front, and operated as an independent gun runner using the pseudonym of Captain Swift, not the first person to use that name in Irish history either. Captain Swift and Captain Moonlight and other names have been used by lots of Irish Republicans, as have civil names. Michael Collins, the Irish revolutionary leader, was also in charge of arms procurement for the IRA, and Briscoe's operation came to his attention. Appointing Briscoe to his personal staff, Collins sent him to post-war Berlin, which was awash with arms after Germany's defeat. Briscoe successfully smuggled in arms into Ireland on board the tugboat Frieda and also the city of Dortmund. A delighted Jew, Collins effectively referred to Briscoe as his Jewman. Probably not a politically correct title to use nowadays, but it was a different world. And um, Collins had a number of Jewish associates, uh, which is something people very rarely comment on. Briscoe, however, disagreed deeply with Collins over his support for the Anglo-Irish Treaty in December 1921, which instituted partition. Cardiff done. Northern Ireland already existed from 1914. So um, the civil war which ensued drew Briscoe to Eamon de Valera and the anti-treaty camp. It was the beginning of a lifelong friendship and the beginning of de Valera's close ties with the Irish Jewish community and his chief rabbi Isaac Herzog. And we'll be coming back to Mr Herzog himself in a few minutes. For Briscoe, de Valera possessed the immoral grandeur of the prophet Elijah. Briscoe entered the Doyle as a member of De Valera's Feet and a Party in 1927 and remained till 1965. And he's actually remembered quite fondly as a mayor of Dublin and remembered as a quite progressive figure. Kevin McCarthy's work highlights the anti-Semitism within Irish Republicanism and the willingness of the Catholic Church to endorse the imagery of Jews as Christ killers. There's no getting away from it. That was there. Even before the Easter uprising, Sinn Féin protocols ran no Jews advertisement. Well, this is because Arthur Griffiths, who starred Sinn Féin, was somewhat anti-Semitic. Strangely enough, he also had a Jewish solicitor and seemed to kind of grow out of this point of view over time. The celebrated writer and poet Oliver St. John Gogarty, somebody should have told them that's the, the editor, that this is not how you spell that surname, James Joyce modelled one of his characters in Ulysses on him, depicted the Jew in the crudest fashion, the blood in his worrying, and he fattens on decay. Uh, James Joyce's parodying attitudes, it doesn't mean he shares them, really. Um, Briscoe met anti-Semitism from pro duty Irishmen and an election for Dublin South as a judo-Bolshevik and an alien ruffian. And there's no getting away that, yes, he did. I've read enough about the period to know those were real reactions to him. So did other figures as well who were Jewish. McCarthy records that one occasion in December 1927, an unmarked car drew alongside him and fired shots. In the 1930s, accusations were reported, imported from the French proto-fascist press. The Briscoe operated an agent for the American investment bank Kun Loeb, while others insisted that he had instigated the assassination of Michael Collins. Highly unlikely, Collins' uh, assassination was just bad luck in a messy and horrid war. Briscoe's Jewishness was not central his, to his identity at this stage in the life, but it was the rising tide of Nazism, the sympathetic attitude of the Catholic Church towards the anti-communism of international fascism that made him a contact for Jews desperate to get their relatives out of Ireland, of, of Germany, sorry, the blue shirts arose in Ireland, yes, the, the kind of idiotic Irish version of the Nazis, I always call them, with their overwhelmingly Catholic membership, while the Irish Catholic Christian Front supported General Franco in Spain. Yet there were other groups, such as the Legion of Mary and the Pillar of Fire Society, which confronted such anti-Semitism. Yes, indeed, they did. Not, it's not a straight line through Catholicism where everyone was fond of these idiots. The Legion of Mary was particularly unfond of General 
Franco and didn't like him. Risco was labelled as a Zionist Jew, even though he knew little about Zionism. Yet the gathering of the storm clouds in Europe during the 1930s and his pivotal role as a sole Jewish parliamentarian in a predominantly Catholic country, imbued by both a resurgent nationalism and a reactionary clergy, was only too clear. Briscoe was drawn magnetically to the vision of Sinus leader, who sent him on missions to the US and Poland. His fundraising trip to South Africa enabled the revisionists to purchase boats to bring East European Jews to Palestine. Let's go down a bit and I'll summarize some of this. Because I'm more interested in the bit after World War II. In the rise of a Hebrew Republic in 1948, Briscoe saw a parallel with the Irish experience. Indeed, both the Ergen and Leahy had studied the military study of the struggle of the Irish Republicans. Even so, following the partition of Palestine, Briscoe advised Minichin Begun and the Ergen not to embark on civil war. He bitterly regretted the conflict in Ireland over the Anglo Irish Treaty. In 1950, an out of office de Valero visited Israel with Briscoe and they dined with Ben Gurion at Chief Vyherskov's home. As they did, and there's actually a forest and nature reserve named after de Valero, strangely enough, in Israel. A man who is nowadays often derided as anti Semitic, which makes a very simplistic and reductionist view of a very long and complicated political life. And here we have the the man who's sometimes called the Sinn Féin rabbi. Isaac Herzog. Herzog was born in Lomza, a town in the northeastern region of Poland. This gentleman is also close to de Valera and was known to hide him and other nationalist leaders and spoke fluent Irish, and was connected to a number of Irish leaders. <laughs> um, so if we were going to have an IRA line of the new underground service, we're definitely going to have to have an Ergon line as well to balance it out. And I think probably twice about coming out with cracks like that for people who know some basic history and, and know a little bit more about how these figures interact and intersect at this period of time.